Janie Cunningham returned from her Central African escapade, her body worn out from four weeks of traversing the equatorial rainforest in pursuit of mountain gorillas, despite her exhaustion, she couldn't shake the excitement of her adventure, however, as she woke up one morning, a subtle discomfort gnawed at her, overshadowing the memories of her journey, the exhaustion lingered, mingling with an unfamiliar ache in her muscles, Janie dragged herself out of bed, her movements sluggish, she shuffled into the bathroom, where a weary reflection greeted her in the mirror, an unusual tan framed her face, leaving a stark contrast around her ears and neck where the hat had shielded her from the equatorial sun, but there was more, a troubling sensation tugged at Janie's consciousness, a sensitive spot on her right shoulder, an unwelcome souvenir from the night, it felt like an intense itch blended with a burning sting, resisting any attempt to alleviate it, pulling her t-shirt aside, Janie inspected the area, her curiosity tinged with concern, the mirror revealed a large red blotch sprawled across her shoulder, its fiery hue contrasting with the surrounding skin, within the angry mark, tiny red dots clustered, each seemingly puncturing the surface, releasing minuscule droplets of blood, her mind raced with possibilities, could it be a jungle creature's bite, memories of the rainforest flooded back, endless foliage, teeming with mysterious life forms, millipedes and jungle spiders, lurked in the undergrowth, their bites carrying unknown consequences, Janie pondered the potential dangers, realizing the unpredictability of the wild terrain she had traversed known for her adventurous spirit, Janie's exploits often worried her mother, yet earned admiration from her father, a fellow enthusiast of the untamed, scuba diving had been her passion, but the allure of Central Africa had drawn her into its depths, revealing both wonders and mysteries she had never imagined Janie's. Life was a perpetual whirlwind of exploration. Each adventure more daring than the last, whether delving into underwater wonderlands or scaling treacherous mountains, she embraced the thrill of the unknown with unwavering enthusiasm, her heart, however, yearned for the untamed wilderness of Central Africa, where the allure of encountering mountain gorillas in their natural habitat beckoned her. The opportunity to venture into the Democratic Republic of the Congo materialized, promising a rendezvous with these majestic creatures, without hesitation, Janie seized the chance, her anticipation soaring as she embarked on her journey, her odyssey began at a tranquil lodge nestled along the shores of Lake Ku, a sanctuary amidst the bustling chaos of the city, yet, tranquility eluded Janie, she craved the pulse of adventure coursing through her veins, at the crack of dawn, Janie arose, fueled by a sense of anticipation. A hasty breakfast preceded her rendezvous with a representative from Binga National Park, the gateway to her gorilla. Trekking expedition, as the journey commenced, Janie absorbed every detail, immersing herself in the rich tapestry of the Congolese wilderness en route to the trek starting point, Janie absorbed insights into the gravity of gorilla conservation in the DRC, the perilous nature of the endeavor became apparent, where protecting these endangered creatures exacted a heavy toll. The stark reality pierced through Janie's excitement, underscoring the sacrifices borne by the park rangers, who faced the constant threat of poachers and rebel factions. As the minibus came to a halt, Janie, flanked by two seasoned rangers, set foot on the rugged terrain, within hours, they ascended to an altitude of 1,500 meters, the oppressive heat and humidity testing their resolve, undeterred, they traversed the undulating hills, their senses heightened, attuned to the slightest hint of their elusive quarry. In the heart of verdant wilderness, Janie and her companions ventured deep into uncharted realms, there. Amidst the lush foliage, no traces of human passage marred the landscape, no tourist-laden trails to follow, instead, a guide led the way, wielding a formidable machete to cleave through the tangled vines and dense undergrowth, carving a path through the pristine wilderness. Their efforts bore fruit as they stumbled upon a scene of raw majesty, a family of mountain gorillas, their imposing forms sprawled across the forest floor mere meters away. Among them stood two majestic silverbacks, a playful baby, and three spirited youngsters, oblivious to the presence of their human observers, a sudden sneeze shattered the tranquility, eliciting laughter as the baby gorilla tumbled playfully towards the group, a testament to the untamed innocence of these magnificent creatures, in their midst, a spectacle unfolded, adults and juveniles alike engaged in playful antics, rolling, hugging, and gently nudging one another with uninhibited joy. To Janie's right, a female gorilla indulged in maternal affection, tenderly 
tapping one of her offspring with her feet, a gesture of boundless love and care, the encounter left Janie spellbound, her soul touched by the raw beauty of nature's creation as they descended from the heights of the rainforest. Janie felt a profound transformation stirring within her, a newfound humility born of communion with these extraordinary beings, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. She sought the gorilla's company on four separate occasions, each encounter leaving an indelible mark. Of reverence upon her soul, now, standing before her mirror, memories of the jungle flooded Janie's thoughts, the persistent hum of insects, the brush of scorpions against her genes, a testament to the untamed wilderness she had traversed, yet, amidst the recollections, a nagging discomfort persisted, a red welt upon her skin, a silent reminder of her jungle sojourn with a resolve tempered by caution. Janie reached for her phone, dialing her doctor's number, determined to unravel the mystery behind. The enigmatic rash that now adorned her shoulder. Dyar, Collins was Janie's steadfast ally in her globetrotting adventures, always ensuring she was well prepared with the necessary inoculations and preventive measures before her departures, his meticulous care had shielded her from harm on countless expeditions, however, this time, something unexpected had emerged, a mysterious ailment that even his foresight couldn't have anticipated an hour later. Janie stood in the doorway of Dr. Collins' office, the empty reception area echoing with the weight of her concern, swiftly summoned inside, she settled across from him, recounting her recent journey with a mixture of apprehension and candor, Dr. Collins, her trusted physician for nearly a decade, listened intently, his furrowed brow betraying the gravity of her words as Janie unveiled the strange spots adorning her shoulder, a palpable tension hung in the air, Dr. Collins circled the desk, his scrutiny unwavering as he inspected the enigmatic markings, silence enveloped the room. Broken only by the shroud of uncertainty that clouded Dr. Collins' expression, a stark departure from his usual composure sensing the gravity of the situation, Janie pressed for answers, her gaze locked with Dr. Collins' troubled eyes, yet, his response offered no solace, his hesitation palpable as he grappled with the weight of his diagnosis, what's wrong, Janie's voice trembled with concern, her pulse quickening with each passing moment, Dr. Collins' solemn demeanor belied his unease, his words. Laden with a gravity that sent shivers down Janie's spine I'm not entirely sure, Janie, he confessed, his tone heavy with apprehension I need to conduct some tests, please, wait here for a moment with a heavy heart, Dr. Collins departed, leaving Janie to confront the gnawing uncertainty that hung in the air, through the closed door, the faint murmur of his instructions to the receptionist filtered in, a solemn directive to cancel all appointments for the day, a testament to the gravity of Janie's plight and the profound unease that gripped her physician's soul. As Janie sat in Dr. Collins' office, a sense of unease settled over her as she witnessed his unprecedented actions, her confusion deepened as she overheard his phone calls to the CDC and the local police, the gravity of the situation dawning upon her, what could possibly warrant such drastic measures when Dr. Collins reappeared, his demeanor masked behind a protective face covering, Janie's apprehension surged. His reluctance to approach further into the room only amplified her growing sense of dread, with each passing moment, the tension thickened, enveloping them in a veil of uncertainty, I'm worried you brought something nasty back from Central Africa, Janie, Dr. Collins finally admitted, his words tinged with apprehension, the gravity of his implication hung heavy in the air, prompting a surge of panic within Janie's heart, desperate for clarity. Janie demanded answers, her patience waning with each cryptic response, yet, as Dr. Collins broached the subject of potential exposure to sick individuals during her time in the Congo, a flood of memories rushed back, recollections of a flu circulating among the lodge staff stirred within her, though she had maintained minimal contact, casting doubt on the likelihood of transmission, however, Dr. Collins' next inquiry struck a nerve, sending shockwaves through Janie's fragile composure were they kitchen staff, his words pierced through her defenses, unearthing buried fears that threatened to engulf her in despair, unable to contain her emotions, Janie's eyes brimmed with tears, her world unraveling before her eyes, in a moment of compassion, Dr. Collins revealed his suspicions, plunging Janie into a realm of uncertainty and fear, you're displaying symptoms of a viral hemorrhagic fever, he explained, his words echoing with chilling clarity, the mention of Ebola, Marburg, or Lassa fever sent a shiver down Janie's spine, 
each syllable carrying the weight of impending doom as panic seized her heart, Janie implored Dr. Collins for reassurance. Desperate for solace in the face of imminent danger, his diagnosis, a stark reminder of the perils lurking within the shadows, cast a pall over Janie's fragile sense of security, plunging her into a maelstrom of fear and uncertainty. Dr. Collins' explanation hung heavy in the air, each word laden with the weight of impending uncertainty. Janie's mind raced with questions. Each one a desperate plea for reassurance in the face of mounting dread, the mention of protocols and contagious diseases. Only served to deepen her sense of isolation, casting a pall over the room that no amount of words could dispel, as Janie grasped for hope amidst the turmoil, a flicker of doubt lingered in her heart, what if this was merely a false alarm, a mere mosquito bite or spider sting, her voice trembled with uncertainty, the fear palpable in the quiver of her words, Dr. Collins' attempted smile offered little solace. His assurances ringing hollow against the backdrop of uncertainty that enveloped them. Yet, with a resolve born of desperation, Janie clung to the fragile hope that his diagnosis was mistaken, that she would emerge unscathed from this nightmare. The remainder of the day blurred into a haze of hurried activity, punctuated by the arrival of CDC personnel clad in hazmat suits, under police escort, Janie was whisked away to a quarantine facility, her world upended by forces beyond her control. In the sterile confines of the facility, Janie grappled with the surrealism of her predicament. A narrative torn from the pages of science fiction, unfolding with chilling clarity before her eyes, her pleas for answers yielded scant reassurance, leaving her adrift in a sea of uncertainty. Dr. Collins promised to contact her family offered little comfort, his words a fragile lifeline in a storm of doubt, with bated breath, Janie awaited the results of the tests, her fate hanging in the balance as technicians meticulously analyzed her blood samples, each moment a testament to the fragility of human existence. Alone in her uncertainty, Janie clung to the hope that amidst the chaos, a glimmer of certainty would emerge, a beacon of light to guide her through the darkness that threatened to consume her, until then, she stood on the precipice of the unknown her fate hanging in the balance as she awaited the verdict that would shape the course of her future. For two long days, Janie found herself confined to her room, a prisoner of her own thoughts. Despite her attempts to maintain a positive outlook, the specter of uncertainty loomed large, casting a shadow over her hopes for the future. Alone with her fears, Janie grappled with the unknown, each passing moment a testament to the fragility of human existence. Then, amidst the silence, a knock echoed through the room a harbinger of hope in the darkness that enveloped her, Dr. Collins stood at the threshold, his broad smile a beacon of reassurance amidst the turmoil. With bated breath, Janie awaited his verdict, her heart pounding with anticipation, not Ebola, Dr. Collins announced, relief flooding Janie's senses like a tidal wave, her tumultuous emotions collided, a whirlwind of fury and elation swirling within her soul, necrotizing fasciitis, he continued matter-of-factly, his words a lifeline in a storm of uncertainty, as the absurdity of the past 48 hours sank in, Janie couldn't help but laugh. A cathartic release of tension that washed over her like a gentle breeze, the irony of her ordeal wasn't lost on her, locked away. Like a common criminal, only to discover the truth behind her mysterious ailment, so, basically, you and the CDC wasted my time, Janie quipped, her laughter punctuating the air, yet, beneath the humor lay a sense of gratitude a profound appreciation for the swift resolution of her ordeal, Dr. Collins shook his head, his expression tinged with understanding, not exactly, he replied, his tone reassuring, necrotizing fasciitis is bacterial, highly treatable with the proper antibiotics, with a weight lifted from her chest. Janie breathed a sigh of relief, a newfound sense of freedom coursing through her veins, Without hesitation, she reached for her phone, eager to share the good news with her loved ones as the notification for another exotic trip flashed across her screen. Janie's heart soared with anticipation, she refused to let fear dictate her future, embracing each new adventure with unbridled enthusiasm. In retrospect, Janie pondered the necessity of Dr. Collins' precautions, a testament to the delicate. Balance between caution and reassurance in the face of uncertainty, with each step forward, she vowed to savor every moment, cherishing the gift of life and the boundless possibilities that lay ahead after watching this story, what do you think of, then there is another story about a baby, 
let's continue. At seven months old, Maya's persistent scratching of her neck raised concerns. But it was the appearance of an unsightly bulge just below her jaw that sent Aaron and Emma Withington into a whirlwind of worry and confusion, parenthood, a journey they were still navigating, suddenly veered into uncharted territory as they grappled with the urgency of Maya's medical condition. For Aaron and Emma, the journey to parenthood had been a deliberate and methodical one. Prior to Maya's arrival, they had dedicated years to nurturing their relationship, laying a foundation of stability and security upon which they hoped to build a family, their aspirations were lofty, peace and harmony, both financial and emotional, were to be the cornerstones of their parenting journey. Emma, in particular, found herself consumed by the mantle of motherhood, an overprotective instinct driving her every action, her fear of the unknown, fueled by countless tales of childhood mishaps, left her vigilant to the point of exhaustion, yet, beneath the surface, Emma grappled with a growing sense of unease. A reluctance to entrust Maya to anyone, even Aaron, her devoted partner, it was Aaron's gentle encouragement that nudged Emma towards self-care. Urging her to embrace moments of respite amidst the chaos of parenthood, grateful for his support, Emma slowly learned to relinquish control, trusting her instincts to guide Maya's journey, however, their newfound equilibrium was shattered by Maya's mysterious ailment, a stark reminder of the fragility of parenthood and the unpredictability of life itself, in the bustling city of Hutchinson, Kansas. Aaron and Emma found themselves thrust into a whirlwind of medical consultations, each one fraught. With uncertainty, as they navigated the labyrinth of diagnosis and treatment, Aaron and Emma clung to each other, their love for Maya anchoring them amidst the storm, with each passing moment, they found strength in their shared resolve, a testament to the unwavering bond that defined their journey as parents. In the face of adversity, Aaron and Emma Withington stood united. Their unwavering commitment to Maya's well-being a beacon of hope in the darkness, for them, parenthood was not just a journey, it was a testament to the power of love, resilience, and the unbreakable bonds that bind a family together. Maya's growing perceptiveness was evident as she embraced the world around her with newfound curiosity, discovering her ability to touch, she greeted each new sound with a radiant smile, her babbling adding to the charming symphony of incomprehensible baby words that filled the air. Sitting up straight on her own, Maya's innate curiosity propelled her into a realm of exploration. Where every object beckoned to be examined and tasted, for Emma, Maya's burgeoning curiosity came with its own set of anxieties, memories of a friend's harrowing ordeal, where their one-year-old son had nearly succumbed to a choking hazard, lingered in her mind, the incident had served as a sobering reminder of the dangers lurking within the seemingly innocuous objects of everyday life as Maya began to crawl. Emma and Aaron found themselves confronting a new set of challenges, with meticulous care, they secured their home. Ensuring that every potential hazard was out of reach, safety fittings adorned the plugs, while kitchen cupboards were meticulously locked, a testament to their unwavering commitment to Maya's well-being. Yet, amidst the routine of safety measures, Maya's unexpected discomfort cast a shadow over their tranquil Friday evening. Emma's maternal instinct kicked into overdrive as she cradled Maya in her arms. Her heart racing at the sight of a telltale redness beneath her jaw, it seemed Maya had scratched the area, a subtle reminder of the ever-present risks lurking in the corners of their home, as Emma tenderly comforted her daughter, she vowed to remain vigilant, her unwavering determination to protect Maya unwavering in the face of uncertainty, for Emma, Aaron, and Maya, parenthood was a journey marked by love, resilience, and the unyielding commitment to safeguard the precious moments that defined their family. As they navigated the trials and triumphs of each passing day, their bond grew stronger, a testament to the enduring power of parental love Emma's heart sank as she reflected on the events of the previous night, a pang of regret coursing through her as she replayed the missed opportunity to protect Maya from the pesky mosquitoes, exhaustion had clouded their judgment, leaving them vulnerable to the whims of the night. With a sense of urgency, Emma tended to Maya's insect bite with meticulous care, her hands trembling with a mixture of guilt and determination. Bath time became a ritual of healing, as antiseptics mingled with the soothing balm of aloe ointment, each application a silent prayer for Maya's well-being. Despite their efforts, Maya remained unsettled, her discomfort palpable in the air, yet, Emma found solace in the rhythm of their routine, her maternal instincts guiding her through the uncertainties of parenthood. Late Saturday morning, Emma's mother arrived. 
her concern casting a shadow over their tranquil home, Emma wrestled with. Conflicting emotions, torn between the desire to trust her instincts and the fear of overreacting to Maya's plight. As Maya's condition worsened, Emma's resolve wavered, her mother's insistence pushing them towards action, with each passing hour, Maya's swollen jaw served as a stark reminder of the fragility of life, urging them towards the sanctuary of the hospital. At the Hutchinson Regional Medical Center, a flurry of activity surrounded Maya as doctors scrambled to unravel the mystery of her condition. Despite Maya's resilient spirit, the uncertainty hung heavy in the air, casting a pall over their hopes. For a swift resolution, as the hours stretched into eternity, Emma and Aaron found themselves thrust into a whirlwind of consultations, each doctor offering a different perspective on Maya's ailment. With bated breath, they awaited answers, their hearts heavy with the weight of uncertainty for Emma and Aaron. The journey ahead was fraught with challenges, their unwavering love for Maya serving as a beacon of hope in the darkness. As they navigated the labyrinth of medical opinions, they clung to the belief that together, they would weather the storm, their bond as a family unbreakable in the face of adversity. After a series of consultations and deliberations, the head physician finally concluded that Maya's condition stemmed from a swollen gland, the exact cause remained shrouded in mystery, yet the physician remained confident that a course of antibiotics would suffice to alleviate Maya's discomfort. With a prescription in hand, the family departed the hospital, reassured by them. Doctors' assurances that the swelling would subside within a day or two, however, the following day brought little respite for Maya and her concerned parents, as they attended their appointments, Maya's discomfort persisted, her swollen cheek a stark reminder of the lingering uncertainty that hung in the air, despite the doctor's assurances, Maya's grandmother, fueled by a deep-seated concern for her granddaughter's well-being, took matters into her own hands with a sense of urgency, Maya's grandmother whisked her away to the hospital. Her heart heavy with apprehension as she witnessed the alarming progression of Maya's condition, by the time they arrived, Maya's cheek had swollen to alarming proportions, a painful reminder of the relentless onslaught of the unknown. The doctors, taken aback by the severity of Maya's condition, scrambled to uncover the root cause of her distress, suspecting a potential staph infection or lymph node involvement. The physician on call wasted no time in initiating treatment with precision and care, the doctor delicately drained the swelling, mindful of the need to maintain sterility and prevent further complications as Maya's swollen cheek gave way to a painful pimple, the tension in the room reached a fever pitch, with every passing moment, the doctors worked tirelessly to stem the tide of uncertainty, their efforts guided by a singular focus on Maya's well-being, in a bid to monitor the progression of the swelling. The doctor marked the perimeter of the affected area with a purple pen, a tangible symbol of their determination to confront the unknown head-on, as Maya lay in the sterile confines of the hospital room, her fate hung in the balance, a testament to the fragility of life and the unyielding resilience of the human spirit. With Maya's condition still shrouded in uncertainty, the medical team made the decision to initiate intravenous antibiotics every two hours. As the treatment plan unfolded, Maya remained confined to the hospital, her fragile state requiring constant monitoring and care, despite their best efforts, the doctors remained baffled by the enigmatic lump that loomed large on the little girl's face. Meanwhile, Emma's mother faced the daunting task of informing Emma and Aaron of Maya's hospitalization, their reaction was one of shock and dismay, their hearts heavy with the weight of parental concern, in hindsight. They lamented their absence and resolved to stand by Maya's side throughout her ordeal as they rushed to the hospital, Emma and Aaron found solace in the sight of their daughter's smile, a beacon of hope amidst the uncertainty that gripped their hearts, despite the gravity of the situation, Aaron sought to lighten the mood with a touch of humor, drawing parallels between Maya's swollen cheek and the fictional character Quasimodo, though it took time for Emma to embrace the light-hearted moment. The shared laughter served as a temporary reprieve from the pervasive sense of unease that pervaded the hospital room, yet, as the hours stretched into eternity, the weight of anticipation hung heavy in the air, casting a pall over their hopes for a swift resolution, with little to do but wait, Emma and Aaron found themselves entrusting Maya's care to the capable hands of the medical team, as they observed the purple line encircling the swelling, a tangible reminder of the uncertainty that gripped their hearts, they resolved to place their faith in the expertise of the doctors, as night descended, 
Casting its shadow over the quiet halls of the hospital, Emma and Aaron clung to the promise of a new day, their hopes buoyed by the doctor's assurances of an early return, in the stillness of the night, they found solace in the enduring bond of love that united them, their unwavering commitment to Maya's well-being unwavering in the face of adversity as Monday morning dawned, a sense of anticipation hung in the air, as Emma, Aaron, and Maya awaited the arrival of the medical team to assess Maya's progress and chart the next course of action, throughout the morning, nurses bustled in and out of the room, their presence a constant reminder of Maya's fragile state despite Maya's occasional tears, it became apparent to her parents that her distress stemmed more from uncertainty than from any physical pain inflicted by the needles, with each passing moment, their resolve to stand by Maya's side only strengthened, their unwavering commitment to her well-being a beacon of hope amidst the uncertainty that gripped their hearts as the morning progressed, a new doctor entered the room. His demeanor marked by an air of clinical detachment, with a cursory glance at Maya's chart, he delved into the intricacies of her condition, his words veiled in technical jargon that left Emma and Aaron grappling for understanding. Turning his attention to Maya's wound, the doctor noted the formation of a scab over the past two days, a telltale sign of the body's attempt to heal, with practiced precision. He gently scraped away the scab, revealing the raw wound beneath, in order for the fluid. To drain effectively, the wound needed to be opened, a necessary yet unsettling procedure for Maya and her anxious parents as the doctor probed for details about the onset of Maya's swelling, Emma and Aaron found themselves grappling with a sudden realization, for months, Maya had been tugging at the left side of her face, an innocuous gesture that had gone unnoticed in the hustle and bustle of daily life. In that moment of clarity, they understood that Maya had been trying to communicate her discomfort all along. A silent plea for help that had gone unanswered, recalling their attempts to decipher Maya's behavior, Emma recounted her search for answers, a quest that had led them down the path of ear infections and teething troubles, yet, amidst the uncertainty, one truth remained clear, Maya's cries were not merely the plaintive wails of a distressed child. They were a silent testament to her unwavering resilience in the face of adversity, as Maya lay before them, her tiny frame a. Testament to the fragility of life, Emma and Aaron resolved to stand by her side, their unwavering love a beacon of hope in the storm, in that moment of reckoning, they embraced the journey ahead, ready to confront whatever challenges lay in store with courage and determination. As the doctor meticulously tended to Maya's wound, a revelation dawned upon the anxious parents. The cause of Maya's discomfort and incessant scratching lay in a simple yet unsuspected source, their playful game of blowing air into their cheeks and releasing it with a gentle slap. What they had innocently assumed to be mere mimicry on Maya's part now emerged as a poignant reminder of the intricacies of parental influence as the doctor requested a moment of privacy to attend to Maya's wound, Emma and Aaron reluctantly stepped out of the room, their hearts heavy with concern, in the hushed stillness of the hospital corridor, they found solace in each other's presence. Their shared apprehension underscoring the gravity of the situation. Meanwhile, inside the room, the doctor worked diligently, his focus unwavering as he cleaned the wound and monitored for signs of drainage, sensing the palpable tension that hung in the air, he sought to create an atmosphere of calm, understanding the emotional toll that weighed heavily upon Maya's parents. Upon his departure, Maya's parents were left to grapple with the sight of a small string protruding from the wound. A tangible reminder of the intricate procedures underway, as they turned to the internet in search of answers. Their minds raced with questions, their longing for clarity tempered by a reluctance to disturb the delicate balance of medical expertise with Maya finally drifting into a fitful slumber, Emma and Aaron retreated to the hospital cafeteria, their weariness compounded by the relentless strain of sleep deprivation, though they endeavored to maintain a facade of composure, their hearts brimmed with unspoken fears. Their collective resolve tested by the weight of parental concern in the quiet solitude of the cafeteria, Emma and Aaron found solace in the warmth of each other's presence, their shared journey a testament to the enduring bond that united them, as they awaited the doctor's return, their thoughts turned to Maya, their unwavering love a beacon of hope in the face of uncertainty seated in the hushed confines of the hospital cafeteria, Emma's resolve wavered as she grappled with the weight of uncertainty. The echoes of tragedy reverberated in her mind, each tale of childhood. Illness casting a shadow of fear over her fragile hopes. 
Despite her unwavering faith, Emma couldn't shake the haunting specter of doubt, the fear that her beloved Maya might be battling a foe far greater than they had imagined as Emma sought solace in the quiet sanctuary of the cafeteria. Her mother's tireless efforts to rally support underscored the gravity of their plight, with each passing moment, the weight of uncertainty bore down upon them. Their collective resolve tested by the relentless march of time, meanwhile, back in Maya's hospital room. The air hung heavy with anticipation as the pediatrician embarked on her rounds, with measured steps, she approached the anxious parents, her reassuring presence a beacon of hope amidst the tumult of uncertainty as the pediatrician inquired about the enigmatic string protruding from Maya's cheek, Emma and Aaron exchanged uncertain glances, their hearts heavy with unanswered questions, with a furrowed brow. The pediatrician pondered the perplexing mystery, her thoughts racing as she sought. Answers to the puzzle that eluded them in a moment of clarity, the pediatrician's resolve solidified, her determination unwavering as she embarked on a journey to unravel the mysteries that lay before them, with deft hands, she meticulously sterilized the area, her movements deliberate as she prepared to confront the unknown with unwavering resolve, with bated breath, Emma and Aaron watched on, their hearts brimming with hope as the pediatrician embarked on a journey of discovery, in the stillness of the hospital room, they found solace in the unwavering dedication of those who fought tirelessly by their side, their shared resolve a testament to the enduring power of love in the face of adversity with surgical precision, the doctor donned her gloves, preparing to unravel the enigma that had confounded the hospital staff and the distraught family for days, as she embarked on this extraordinary journey, little did she know that the revelation awaiting them would defy all expectations, plunging them into a realm of disbelief and wonder. In her decades of service on the pediatric floor, the doctor had encountered a myriad of medical mysteries, but none as perplexing as this, with each delicate tug at the string protruding from Maya's cheek, the air crackled with anticipation, every movement a testament to the profound strangeness of their predicament as the room held its breath. The specialist extracted a two-inch long black feather from the swollen recesses of Maya's neck, leaving everyone in stunned silence, Aaron and Emma. Watched in disbelief, their minds reeling at the surreal spectacle unfolding before them, the doctor's brow furrowed in bewilderment, grappling with the implausible reality of their discovery, how could such a thing have come to pass, the feather, a silent witness to the unfathomable mysteries of the human body, had lain dormant within Maya for months, its presence a testament to the inexplicable wonders of nature. With the immediate mystery resolved, attention turned to the source of this. Unearthly feather, Though the Whittingtons speculated about the origin, the truth remained elusive, yet, in a decisive gesture, they resolved to bid farewell to the down pillow, a relic of comfort now tainted by uncertainty. As the tumult of emotion settled, Emma wrestled with a nagging sense of guilt, haunted by the specter of her daughter's suffering. In the wake of their ordeal, questions lingered, each one a poignant reminder of the fragility of life and the enduring resilience of the human. Spirit, the doctors, drawing from their extensive experience, couldn't deny the likelihood that Maya had endured significant pain throughout her ordeal, yet, remarkably, Maya's cries were subdued, emerging only in response to the nurse's clinical interventions, Emma grappled with a profound sense of guilt, wondering if she and her husband had overlooked subtle signs of distress in their daughter's general health, however, the doctors offered reassurance, affirming that even the most vigilant, parent may not have discerned such a hidden affliction with the naked eye. In the twilight of this surreal saga, a palpable tension lingered as a hard knot formed within Maya's cheek, its dimensions measuring roughly one and a half inches, with cautious optimism, the doctors opted to grant it time, hoping it might resolve on its own accord, yet, should intervention become necessary, they stood prepared to orchestrate a surgical procedure in Wichita. Poised to excise the enigmatic knot from its place of origin reflecting on this extraordinary tale, one is compelled to marvel at its sheer improbability, who could have fathomed that a simple feather could wreak such havoc within the delicate confines of Maya's cheek, the circumstances surrounding its arrival remain shrouded in mystery, prompting speculation and intrigue as we contemplate this riveting narrative, we invite you to share your insights and reflections. Did you ever imagine that a feather could precipitate such a remarkable chain of events, how do you envision the feather found its way into Maya's? Cheek, join the conversation by subscribing to our channel and activating the notification bell, 
your engagement ensures you'll never miss out on our captivating and thought-provoking content. After watching this story, how do you feel? Then there is another story about a baby born with white hair, let's expect what will happen. When the newborn boy arrived, the family embarked on a journey filled with anticipation and excitement. The older siblings, informed of the impending arrival, eagerly awaited their new brother, envisioning what little Ben would be like, as the family made their way to the grandparents' house that morning, they couldn't contain their joy and curiosity. However, upon Ben's delivery, the scene unfolded with a mix of emotions, weighing a remarkable 11 pounds. Ben's robust cry reassured his parents of his healthy lungs, yet, beneath the surface, a cloud of concern hovered over the medical staff, the doctor's hushed conversations and the nurse's swift actions. Raised alarms for Ben's parents. As the nurse swaddled Ben in a towel, his parents sensed that something wasn't quite right, they craved transparency from the medical team, yearning to understand the situation fully, why the secrecy, was their baby in good health, it wasn't until Ben was carefully washed that the truth unfolded before their eyes, amidst the water and soap, Ben's unique feature revealed itself, a head adorned with strands of silver hair, a striking anomaly in newborns, unlike the usual wispy locks, Ben's mane, resembled that of a lion, its silver hue defying nature's norms, with the revelation came uncertainty, the doctor, candid yet cautious, admitted uncertainty about Ben's health status, the unusual silver hair left them pondering, unsure of what it might signify for their precious newborn. The medical team faced a perplexing situation with Ben's unique appearance, unlike anything they had encountered before. Their primary concern centered around the possibility of a genetic anomaly, prompting a series of tests to unravel the mystery, albinism emerged as a prominent consideration among the medical professionals, this condition, characterized by the absence of melanin, the pigment responsible for skin, hair, and eye color, often manifests in individuals with pale skin, light eyes, and white hair beyond its impact on physical appearance, albinism poses significant health risks. Without melanin's natural protection, the skin becomes vulnerable to the sun's harmful rays, increasing the risk of sunburn and skin cancer. Similarly, the eyes, devoid of pigmentation, require careful shielding from sunlight to prevent vision problems and potential blindness. Understanding the gravity of the situation, the doctor proposed a DNA analysis to confirm the diagnosis definitively. Ben's physical attributes aligned with the characteristics of albinism, his porcelain skin, silver-toned hair bereft of pigmentation, and the peculiar hue of his eyes hinted at the condition's presence, yet, the extent of its impact on his vision remained uncertain. With bated breath, Ben's parents consented to the testing, their hearts heavy with concern yet hopeful for answers, despite the looming medical inquiries, to them, their precious boy appeared to be the epitome of health and vitality, a testament to the enduring love and devotion that enveloped their growing family. Following a thorough examination by the pediatric specialist, Ben's parents received reassuring news. No immediate medical issues were detected, however, the specialist emphasized that his assessment was based solely on physical examination, urging caution and recommending further testing before leaving the hospital. Despite the medical advice, Ben's mother yearned for a moment of intimacy with her newborn outside the sterile confines of the ICU, holding him close, she cherished the opportunity for precious skin-to-skin -skin contact, confident in her unwavering love and commitment to her son. Regardless of any uncertainties that lay ahead later that evening marked a significant milestone as Ben met his siblings for the first time, their innocent observation likening him to a white mouse, broke the tension, eliciting laughter and lightening the atmosphere amidst the weight of unanswered questions about Ben's condition. As Ben's unique appearance captured the attention of many, he became affectionately known as Prince Charming, a moniker that resonated across the internet. Amidst the curiosity surrounding his condition, the family found solace in the warmth and support of those following Ben's journey online. After a week of careful observation and medical care, Dr. Zoltan Kumar delivered the long-awaited news, Ben was cleared to go home, with hearts full of hope and gratitude, the family embarked on a new chapter, ready to embrace the challenges and joys that lay ahead, their love for Ben unwavering through every twist and turn of his extraordinary story. The following morning, Ben appeared to be in good health, but his parents anxiously awaited the test results to chart the next steps in his care. 
They were advised to remain vigilant for any unusual symptoms and to shield him from the sun's rays until further notice however, their relief was short-lived as the next morning brought alarming signs, Ben seemed to struggle with his breathing, prompting immediate medical attention, doctors discovered fluid in his lungs, necessitating an extended stay in the hospital for monitoring and treatment later that day. The results of the albinism tests arrived, revealing an unexpected outcome, Ben did not have the genetic disorder, despite this revelation, the mystery surrounding Ben's unique characteristics persisted, leaving doctors perplexed while it's common for baby's hair and eye color to evolve over time, Ben's distinct features defied conventional explanations, with a complete absence of pigmentation in his hair and brows, doctors doubted any future changes in color. As Ben received treatment for his lung condition, his mother underwent psychological evaluation to explore potential stressors during her pregnancy, however, her accounts of a relaxed pregnancy dismissed theories of environmental factors influencing Ben's appearance, doctors remained puzzled, considering various possibilities such as vitamin deficiencies or mutations in hair cells as potential causes for Ben's strikingly white hair, despite their best efforts. The origin of Ben's unique attributes remained shrouded in mystery, leaving his family and medical team searching for answers after spending. About two weeks in the hospital following his birth, Ben's family was finally permitted to return home, despite ongoing medical inquiries into Ben's unique appearance, the fluid in his lungs appeared to be an isolated incident, unrelated to any long-term health issues. As time passed, doctors continued their quest to unravel the mystery behind Ben's striking features, after a month of exhaustive research. They summoned both parents to the hospital with news of their findings with bated breath. Ben's parents awaited the revelation. Finally, the tests had yielded an answer, Ben was simply an exceptionally rare and uniquely beautiful baby boy, the thorough examination confirmed his pristine health, attributing his distinctive hair color to an incredibly rare genetic trait. Although Ben's light eyes contained a small amount of melanin, indicating the potential for his body to produce more pigment over time. His hair color was expected to gradually change as he grew, with this assurance, Ben's parents could embrace a future. Filled with hope and possibilities for their extraordinary son, with a collective sigh of relief, Ben's family returned home, comforted by the knowledge that their little Prince Charming was indeed a one-of-a-kind blessing, despite the initial uncertainties, they now cherished Ben's uniqueness as a testament to his remarkable journey reflecting on Ben's journey. Viewers were invited to share their thoughts and experiences with light-haired babies in the comments below, the video concluded with. Gratitude for the viewers' engagement and anticipation for the next installment. The above is today's story, if you like it, please subscribe our channel and give it a thumbs up, see you next time.